Aloha and welcome to our video on the Cenozoic Era, the Age of Mammals. In this video, we will discuss what happened during the Cenozoic Era, we'll look at mammals and why they became widespread, and then we'll discuss the major developments in the Tertiary and Quaternary periods. So our quick overview of the Cenozoic Era, if we take a look here, it happened from about 65 million years ago till today. We're in the Cenozoic Era right now. Um, we had a bunch of different things happen. We remember 65 million years ago, we had the extinction of the dinosaurs. And what we saw was this massive evolution of mammals. And that's why we call this Cenozoic Era the Age of Mammals. The Alps started to form in Europe. We saw that India collided with Asia and the Himalayan mountains started to form. Climates began to cool a little bit. And that was key to our mammal evolution. And we'll talk about that in the next slide. About 40 million years ago or so, we saw that grasses evolved and started to spread, and this allowed our grass-eating mammals to evolve and then flourish. And then in the Quaternary period, what we notice is we have ice ages going on. We have these large ice age mammals, the giant sloths, the woolly mammoths, the mastodons, things like that. They would thrive, they evolved, and then they went extinct, and we see modern humans come to the scene. So why were the mammals so successful? Well, for them to be successful, they had to be able to outcompete the reptiles. And one of the key features that allowed them to do this was the fact that they were warm-blooded. So they now had this hair, this fur covering, which insulated them and allowed them to regulate their body temperature. Remember, dinosaurs don't have this. They may have been cool-blooded, but they weren't warm-blooded. So if you have a pet snake or a pet lizard or a pet turtle, you know that it has to sun itself to warm its body up mammals actually were able to keep the heat from respiration inside and they were able to regulate their body temperatures that way. Um, with the extinction of the dinosaurs, it opened up a whole bunch of niches and the mammals were able to outcompete and fulfill those niches. So that's why we see this explosion of the mammals. Okay, so let's take a look at the tertiary period. Um, notice that Pangaea was continuing to split 50 million years ago. You could look at the map and it kind of looks like it does today. I mean, you're seeing the differences here. Um, remember that India is going to collide with Asia here and we're going to have some joining up of the continents and spreading out a little bit more. So it's still moving around a bit. Um, one of the things we noticed is that we had these cooler climates and we kind of hinted about that when we talked about mammals. Um, we saw the evolution of songbirds, so that one's something new. So we had birds coming along, now we have songbirds. Um, we have these mammal evolutions like we talked about, and they were kind of key and tied to some of the ways that they ate. That was kind of a big one. We had our meat eaters, and they developed those meat-eating type, slicing teeth, grabbing teeth, things of that nature. We have our plant eaters, which had the flat type of grazing eaters, and then with the advent of grass, that just made them explode a little bit more. And then we had rodents. And one of the neat things about rodents is they have self-sharpening teeth. So as they bite down on things like that, they actually continue to sharpen their teeth. And then they can use those sharp teeth to like burrow into things. So if we went back to the tertiary period, what we would see is something that looked a little bit like it does today in the grasslands. You would start to see some of the mammoths, the mastodons. You would see birds in the air large mammal predators, so it kind of starting to look like what we would see now. And this brings us to the Quaternary period, and this is our modern time here. Um, geologically, what we're noticing is the advance and retreat of glaciers. So we can kind of see where we have glacial times down here and then interglacial times. And you can see this glacier, how it extends and moves. And this coming and going of the glaciers would have drastically changed the climate in areas and that's why we were allowed to have these larger like the mastodons and mammoths that we would have these large animals that could survive with these changes they were able to maintain the body heat when it got cold and they would migrate with the glaciers now we noticed that we had the extinction of them about 10,000 years ago um, that's about the time of the last ice age when it ended so at the last ice age, when they no longer had that ability, the climate started to warm up a little bit. Food might have changed a little bit for them, but we do notice the extinction of the large animals. And not just the mastodons and mammoths, but your giant sloths and things of that nature also. A um, couple other things when we're talking about ice ages, in the lessons they'll tell you a little bit about the Milikanovich cycles. 
And that was three different cycles that interrelated. And when they all hit the same time, it would cause an ice age. And they'll go through that in the lesson a little bit more. We'll just mention the name here. And one of the big things we notice in the quaternary is the migration of Homo sapiens. So modern man came onto the picture during the quaternary period. And that may have helped out with the extinctions of some of these larger animals. Okay, so that's it for our videos for this course. Um, good luck on your quiz and your final exam, and we'll see you in the videos in the next course.